Hello, good morning and welcome. I will make this video as short as possible. It is how to change the servo from the servo steering on this Vauxhall or Opel model car. Here's a brief, brief overview so you know what the car looks like. And this is the model Astra 1.7 CDTI. So, when we come round to the front here, we will see where the beast is. And it's quite difficult even to fill these things up. You need a funnel and a piece of pipe sticking out of it just to get fluid into here. That cap has a dipstick built into it. So you just unscrew that, find the dipstick, and you can see the level of the hydraulic steering fluid and top it up if you need to. Well, anyway, this one went wrong about three days ago and I was looking for new pumps online and they are several hundred pounds and what the YouTube videos said was that if this car is a left-hand drive then you can lift the steering servo pump up without taking off the subframe but if it's a right-hand drive car you can't do that well actually that's wrong because I did lift this out without taking off the subframe obviously saving yourself a huge amount of time and that's a job you can only do with lots of jacks and all the rest it is a fiddly job and I really really would not recommend it without an inspection pit we have one we just built one and I would describe it as a very difficult job in terms of it being very very fiddly unless you've got particularly small hands you might get away with it or unless you can train a child now this is what the pump looks like when it's out there are two variants there's the one with a black cap and there's the one with a white cap the cap obviously is not on in the picture here but this is the white cap variant now the way it's held in there's a great big spider of metal prongs sticking out from these mounting points going all over the place and that's why you have to remove the subframe to get that out but you can unbolt this from the spider it's only three nuts, one here, one here, and one here. That's at the bottom. All they are six millimeter standard nuts. All very simple. Access is the problem. You really have to have a good array of tools and you need things like this, you know, very long extension. You need at least two small socket sets so you can couple together the extensions. I've got longer extensions than this in the other set, but you have to put two or three together sometimes, then two, then one just to be able to get to these nuts when they're in the car. It is not easy. Uh, this is what the pump looks like when you take out the hydraulic pipes. That's where they go in and it's, they're held in with one um, hexagonal nut there. Use a normal Allen key, a six millimeter Allen key to undo it. So that comes out and then once one pipe is actually connected to the mounting plate the other one is has a flange and it's pushed in by the mounting plate but you just undo that and they both pull out in theory you must replace the o-rings which are on the pipes which come out uh, i haven't done so and i haven't had any problems um, i think one has just to be very careful with them and cover them when they're hanging around in the car so they don't get damaged in any way now the pump itself just so I can give you an overview, you can see every side of it, what it looks like, the top and the bottom. That's always a help before you start any job. There we go. And this is what I'm going to refer to as the electrical side. Sorry about the wind to noise, because this is where the electrical connections go in. And taking them off, just taking those off is actually quite difficult because I'll try and get the thing up right so I can video it. So, so on the small small connection here, if it will lighten up a little bit there, there's a connector that goes on here and it's got a little blue tab. On all the videos it says just pull the blue tab as though it's a clip and it will come loose. Well it, it doesn't. I mean both on this original one and on the one I got from the breakers eventually um, I had to more or less rip this fitting off. I did take off the blue tab, it was unclear whether it should go that way or upwards towards the camera or anything else. Um, I think in hindsight it should go this way. 
spot and come out to where the screwdriver is going now but that's still uncertain and what we did was we got the screwdriver and levered this one off and you know carefully so it wouldn't break now this connector which connects the power see two tabs there one negative one positive i would think um that was very simple it's got a big gray a big gray sort of a, a grip on it you pull the gray gray grip and as you pull it the whole thing lifts off at sort of 45 degrees and then you can pull it out and that, that one's quite simple it's quite chunky you can't really break it but this one the, the little one is, is is fiddly so just to show you what's inside here apparently sometimes these get filled with water and that causes battery drainage and it causes the pump to fail now this one did not have any water whatsoever but for some reason driving a few days ago this seal rubber gasket it just popped out a bit and fluid was pouring out of it so i don't know if that meant the pump is broken and going into overpressure and therefore forcing this out or because i was towing a horse box and the wheels perhaps got pushed hard on a very very rutted road that i was driving down perhaps just pushed it into overpressure and forced that seal out that's just a theory i don't know but anyway i went to the breakers and a very nice gentleman who runs the local place he gave me this pump for 600 kroner which is about yeah, 50 60 pounds uh, which i thought was very very fair because looking at the price of the new they're more like 300 well, obviously you might get them cheaper on ebay etc but i did have a good look now to take the pump out the very first thing you have to do is take the battery out and you must do this anyway because as you drag that pump unit out it's going to touch on the positive of the starter motor further down the motor and, and it is going behind the engine and it is going to cause a short and potentially a fire and sparks and all kinds of problems the battery's got to come out now also because when you take the battery out it means that this uh, fluid reservoir can come out now on the front of the fl fluid reservoir difficult to see in this light and it's hellish windy and dark and cloudy today but just down here there's a little plastic clip it's this black plastic and it sits on the end of a bar which is coming towards you now break that off simple as that with a screwdriver and that means you can then pull the reservoir you slide it it's got a clip at the back which has got to unclip I'm really sorry about the darkness here because I can't hold lights at the same time as hold the phone but there's a this clip has to more or less be sort of ripped off or screwdrivered loose to come this way and slide the whole assembly this way with this battery out of the way and you can then just peel it back out of the way on its pipes and that gives you enough space to undo one single bolt at the top of the mounting for the uh, for this unit whatever it's called it's something to do with the, the brake system i don't know what the can't remember what the damn thing's called there's the nut just one nut comes off there which means that this can be just pushed back just a couple of centimeters allowing slightly better hand access into this very tight area to get to the pump so all you do is you take off your electrical connections the two cables as i mentioned before down here large and small and you take out the two hydraulic pipes by undoing the single bolt and then you undo the three bolts mounting the bottom of the pump and you undo the one up here for access and as i say in theory on a right hand drive car you can't get it out but you can and i will carry you now round to the bottom but i must point out one thing this new pump you may be able to see down there it says that the serial numbers match the old pump but it says rc romeo charlie now on the old pump it says rd see romeo delta so that worried me was it going to be the same was it not but the new one went straight in and it worked immediately self-priming as far as i know i just poured the fluid in and off it went and i must say when i parked the car in the inspection pit um the wheels were at an angle so it's not just a coincidence that it happened to be set that both when the pumps were straight there's a lot of electronics in here i don't know how it works at all but it does seem to know in what uh, position it is so you can put uh, any pump in as far as i know they seem to be interchangeable now i will take you down into the inspection pit to the bowels of the earth and up here 
and I don't think we'll even get a camera on it because it is that tight. But up here, let's see, we'll zoom out a bit to get an idea of where we are. This is the right hand subframe. This is the back of the engine where my finger is, and there's the starter motor just, uh, just in front of my finger there. And you pull, once the unit is unbolted, you pull it this way, coming from the left of the vehicle to the right of the vehicle, coming past the starter motor. And it just fits. And when I say just, it, it actually touches on all sides of it, but you can, by wriggling it, just get it through. And it's a two person job. You need one at the top taking the weight and one at the bottom taking the weight. In between you, you can work the pump out. And it's pretty heavy. And then, of course, it drops down this way. Now, the orientation for the pump is with the electrical parts. They need to be upwards. There's the electrical parts. They need to be upwards facing the top of the car as it comes out. So you're pulling it this way. But with the top on, of course, it's all bolted together as one unit, uh, not split as it is in the picture now it comes this way across and turns and comes downwards now you can imagine if you did it the standard way and undid the subframe you can imagine the amount of work and how difficult it is to reach this thing well you have to reach your hand in here quite often you have to reach your hand forwards from in front of the wheel arch you have to reach it from the back of the wheel arch up here it is a nightmare so if you've got small hands, you're at a real advantage. But the point is, it can be done. And uh, I really hope this helps people because in terms of time, let me think, it probably took an hour and a half to two hours, maybe, maybe even three to get it out. And, and that was working with my son because he was passing tools into the pit and all the rest. And I suppose putting it back was probably about the same, about three hours, because of how fiddly it is. So, anyway, you've got the bones of the thing there. I suggest watching a couple of other videos on YouTube who probably have better cameras and lighting than I do, but this, will, this gives you, you know, the exact technique of how to do it. Um, and I hope, that, hope that's of help. Cheers.